Hi, everybody. So after hearing about all of this weather variation, well, insects might also come into play quite a bit with that variation too. So I'm going to start with San Jose scale because right now is the time to sort of set out your monitoring for this pest. And really the goal here is to detect the first emergence of crawlers um, to prevent the armored stage of development. The armored stage is really hard to control because once they seal up onto the tree, it's really hard to get contact with insecticides. And so you wanna scout for this, especially and in particular in areas with a history of scale infestation. And this can be pretty straightforward and cheap with uh, black electrical tape around a limb as pictured on the right hand side. So you can look at these two times a week. That's why I would focus on areas with a history or um, if they have active infestations, this is gonna be the best place to scout for them. And I would also recommend having a 10X hand lens for this. So in terms of treatment options for this, um, softer insecticides for piercing sucking insects, which they are at this um, throughout their life cycle technically, even though they have that scale covering. So Movento, just remember that this product really worked best at petal fall first cover. Um, if you hit it uh, a little bit too early, that's not going to be good. Um, there's also Savanto, which is a material that currently is thought of as be safe, but that could quickly uh, be considered not be safe, just to put that on your radar. Um, for this pest, you can also consider using um, insect growth regulators such as a steam or centaur. So mating disruption for this pest is in development. Uh, you're gonna hear a lot of talk about mating disruption throughout this talk. Um, and I'm just trying to put that bug in your ear because as the regulators um, continue to remove different AIs and products for insect control, it is important to know a secondary method that you could potentially use. So next let's talk about plum curculio. If you have a problem with this, you are well aware of how bad and how quickly it can escalate. Um, so you can see the adult there. And then around this time, um, you've got ova position happening. Um, and this can leave, leave quite a bit of scarring on the fruit. Uh, the larva then develops inside of the fruit um, and comes out and that creates additional larval feeding damage. Adults can also feed on the fruit. So it is kind of important to get them out of your orchard if you are having problems and have a history of problems with them. So here we have our adult on the uh, right hand side. So they technically and most of the time it's broadly thought of that they uh, overwinter outside of apple orchards. Now I have heard some people say that they might overwinter a little bit in any sort of um, you know, if you have a bunch of leaves underneath your trees, they could technically overwinter there, but it does seem to be commonly thought that they do migrate outside of the orchard. And so what happens is that around this time of the year, they start migrating into the edges of the orchards, and that's around 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit during bloom. So things are escalating fast, so it's really important to think of this past, especially if you have a known history of in your orchard. Right now at bloom, they should be in the trees. And at petal fall, this oviposition is occurring. Um, and the length of time of this oviposition depends on seasonal temperatures. And I'm assuming that that's happening exceptionally quickly uh, with our hot temperatures. So effective control for these. Um, so you can apply a preventative insecticide spray basically from petal fall to the end of oviposition. And some suggestions for that would be Imidan, Actera, Avant, and Verdeprin. Um, and if you're also finding European apple sawfly, this, these products will also work for that. So let's move on to tarnished plant bug. This is another one that if you have a history of infestation might be important to consider. It feeds on the buds and flower parts in the spring and can cause a possible aborted fruit. They can have two to three generations per year, and that's part of why it might be important to catch this first one. Um, and it's active in the early season on warmer days. Much like any other insects, they are ectotherms, so they're going to respond to this hot weather and become more active. Um, you can monitor for these if this is an interest or part of your program, especially if you want you have an area that you know has had infestation and you want to catch them quickly. So white sticky panel traps along the border, you can set them at uh, silver tip, which was much earlier in the season, and it put, putting every one, trap every three to five acres, basically. 
And so if you're looking for an action threshold for these and tracking them throughout the season, I would suggest using three uh, tarnished plant bugs average over five traps. That's in a very conservative action threshold um, that can be used up until bloom, unless there's a history of outbreak. Um, so if there's this history of outbreak, it might be good to use this throughout the season to try to knock back the population in a more permanent manner. So five to eight tarnished plant bugs um, per five traps is considered a really high population and um, commonly used threshold for post bloom. Now I do wanna mention that although I'm suggesting pyrethroids here, um, getting rid of your broadleaf weeds inside of the orchard is going to also be key to reducing these populations because they tend to hang out there. Um, the risk with pyrethroids is that they can flare European red mite, which can be a whole secondary issue that no one wants. So I would use them with caution. So moving on to more mating disruption, this time for internal leps. So OFM and codling moth. Um, so if you're thinking about doing this, now is a good time to hang ties. Um, and so this technology we think is becoming easier to use over time, especially with the combinations of pests. So for example, you can get uh, ties or puzzle pieces that have multiple pheromones in them for multiple leps. So the other advancement in this area is that you can put less dispensers for acre. So currently Sidetrack, which is a Trace A product, um, is suggesting a rate of 32 dispensers per acre. Some of the products can be up to 200. So that's quite an improvement. And this is really best for larger blocks. You want to do this if you're thinking about establishing it in blocks that are 10 or more acres. And that being said, for New York State, we still have some questions that we need to address. Uh, you know, this is a risky um, investment in a certain way because uh, you're basically that first year, if you decide not to spray for the internal leps, it could be really risky in the sense that you might have still an infestation that year and it might hurt your um, harvest and, and the resulting damage from these pests, which can be critical. Um, so we really need to figure out what does this, you know, the transition between spray program to mating disruption for these pests look like um, so that we can give you a better idea of what this might look like in terms of your actual risk. Um, and then, of course, another question is dispersal of pheromone under varying conditions. So with such wild ups and downs uh, in terms of temperature with just year to year differences, the dispersal of the pheromone from these products, um, in particular, the, um, the, sp the spray dispensers, those tend, it's not really clear how well those persist in the environment. And if say, you might need to have them dispense more of the product on, let's say more humid days uh, or less or vice versa. So these are important questions that we need to answer specifically for New York State. That being said, um, let's talk about oblique branded leaf roller and other lepidopterans. Pictured on the bottom is actually the spongy moth larvae, which Mike has told me that in this in Champlain Valley, we've been seeing a lot of them. Um, and then this is the oblique banded leaf roller at the top. So thinking about these as sort of a collective of lepidopterans, um, I think it's important to, for in particular the oblique banded leaf roller, looking at bud clusters for 3% larval infestation. Um, and I would follow that for all of them assessing the, par the parts of the plant that are key, you know, leaves, finding them on the leaves with chewing damage. Um, if you're looking at 100 leaves, three of them might be a, a decently conservative treatment threshold. So for, in terms of treatments that you could use, BT is going to be the softest of the products. So products like Dipel, Agree, and Javelin. And then um, if you have a larger infestation or you're particular, you're using this in conjunction for possibly other pests, Delegate, Alticor, Exeril, and Verdeprin um, are other good choices to fit into the program, especially if you have overlapping pests where this can target multiple of them. So lastly, let's talk a little bit about aphids. We've got the woolly apple aphid in the top and rosy apple aphid on the bottom. So in terms of assessing if it's time to spray or not, examining clusters or terminal leaves for wingless adults and nymphs, one infested cluster it equals it's time to treat because these can take off very fast and become 
a huge population causing lots of damage to the leaves on the tree. So treatment suggestions, again, Movento, this should be applied at first cover, Savanto and a sale. And that's pretty much it. 